Hello everyone, this is My Life Wire, and welcome to another lens review. Today we're taking a look at the very overlooked and underrated lens in my opinion. The Sigma 17 to 70mm f2.8 to f4 lens, designed for APS-C sensor cameras. I bought this lens to use in combination with the speed booster on my GH5. The reason I got this specific lens is because I thought it was a brilliant compromise between a wide aperture and a long focal range, which I will talk about more later. I've previously tested the Sigma 17 to 50mm f2.8 lens as well, and I'm pleasantly surprised by the size and weight by this Sigma 17 to 70mm lens. It is quite smaller than the Sigma 17 to 50, making it a nice fit on the GH5. I also love the more contemporary design and build quality compared to the older design on the 17 to 50 lens. The zoom ring made of rubber has a very nice feel in your hand. It turns the opposite direction than most lenses that I'm used to, uh, for example, in Sony and Panasonic systems, but I guess you can get used to it after a while. The focus ring is also partially made of rubber. It is locked when toggled on autofocus mode. In manual mode, it turns very smoothly and loosely, offers very little resistance, and has a very short travel, making focusing very fast, but maybe not the easiest. But at least it's full mechanical focus, which means you can mark the specific distance and repeat focusing accurately. The lens has two buttons. One is AF-MF switch, which is very tough to push. I use both modes with this lens almost equally. I will talk about autofocus soon. Another one is OS switch, which I always leave it off because it conflicts with the in-body stabilization on the GH5 and render long distance video impossible. The lens hood is top quality, partially rubber, adds a little bit of vignetting in the frame at a wide angle due to the fact of being adapted on a micro for third system. It shouldn't be a problem on native APS-C cameras. Most native micro for third zoom lenses offer at most f2.8 aperture, which gives you limited capability to shoot in low light situation or to blur out background. That's one of the main reasons people get adapted lens on micro for third system. The Sigma 17 to 70 f2.8 to 4 behaves like a 12 to 50 mm f2 to f2.8 with a speed booster on, which beats a pro micro for third lens, for example, the 12 to 40 mm f2.8 with one stop faster at wide end. The Leica 12 to 60 mm f2.8 to f4 is also a brilliant lens, but it is a full stop slower throughout the range. By the way, there's something weird about the f-stop readout on the GH5, probably due to the bad communication between the lens uh, through Viltrox, Speed Booster, and the GH5. The camera reads f2.0 throughout the range instead of transitioning to f2.8 at telephoto end as a variable aperture lens should, which means, for example, when you zoom in to 50mm, the lens physically should be at f2.8 on micro for third, but it still reads f2.0. Don't be fooled. If you use auto exposure, the camera will underexpose the image because it thinks the aperture is wider than it actually is. That's something you need to pay attention to when using this lens. I always turn the aperture up to f2.8 manually when I zoom to 50mm and beyond to guarantee a correct exposure. Another issue is that the f-stop readout sometimes bug out, uh, glitch out. When you swap lenses, sometimes it gets stuck at f2.2 or f2.8 or 3.5 instead of f2.0. And I would have to swap to a faster lens, for example, Sigma 30mm f1.4 and swap back to correct the max f-stop readout. The 17 to 70 mm f2.8 to 4 translates into a 25 to 98 mm f4 to 5.6 full frame equivalent, which is pretty nice range, not as impressive if you compare to full frame lenses, but hey, we're talking about micro for third system. Here's a demonstration of the zoom range compared to the Lumix 12 to 60 mm kit lens. Let's talk about the image quality. I've seen reviews saying that it's soft at wide angle and I've pixel peeped with many sample photos and concluded that at wide end, the bottom edges are indeed a little bit soft. When stopping down aperture or zoom in, the soft edges go away and the center of the frame remains sharp. 
Overall, sharpness is rather decent. Some people say that Sigma 17 to 50 f 2.8 is sharper, but I haven't noticed any big difference. Because it's adapted on GH5, there is vignetting and distortion issues, especially at wide end, or when focusing at close distances, there is heavy vignetting that also compromises the overall resolution of the image. But as someone who mainly shoots video, this almost doesn't affect me. If you want, you can check out my pixel peeping video. I'm gonna link it down below. Overall, I think it is very sharp for general purpose lens with plenty detail. Let's talk about the autofocus feature. I was surprised by how silently it focuses. The lens has a more modern build than the Sigma 17 to 50 and also a much quieter autofocus motor. It is also pretty fast and accurate considering it is adapted. It even works in video mode, but expect a lot of micro hunting and you do hear focusing noises in video recording. Yes, it makes noises, but it is quieter than other traditional DSLR lenses. Uh, still, it's no match to modern mirrorless lenses. I can safely shoot photos with autofocus with this lens. Maybe 1 in 10 pictures will be autofocus, but uh, still decent enough to be worth using it. In video, even though it works better than expected, I do not recommend it for the noise and hunting still. The bokeh out of this lens is quite pleasing. I like the look of it when vlogging, that's a full frame f4 equivalent. When shooting close up, you get a very nice smooth background blur. When shooting portrait, you get a very pleasing out of focus background. It's not portrait lens, it doesn't melt the background like f1.8, f1.4, but it shows just enough detail for you to see what's the context of the photo. Personally, I like it for portrait very much, which I really was not expecting. Speaking of vlogging, many people think vlogging lens is a wide-angle lens such as 10 to 20 mm lens, but in my opinion a vlogging lens is wide but also all around that starts from 24 mm to at least 70 mm. The longer the range the better. Of course you need to hit a nice balance between range and size of the lens. When vlogging I need a lens that can zoom in from far away when spotting something interesting and pick the subject out of the environment. So for me the Sigma 17 to 70 is a perfect lens for vlogging. Of course it would be even better if it were f2.8 constant aperture just like the common Tamron 17 to 70 f2.8 for Sony E-mount. The lens is also marked as a macro lens. It does focus pretty closely, but as a micro for third shooter, that kind of a minimum focusing distance is nothing new. I believe my Lumix 12 to 60 mm kit lens can do just as well, if not better, in macro shots. But this 17 to 70 probably is much better than other APS-C lenses for DSLR. In low light, it also performs fairly decently. I don't have that much confidence in extreme low light, but if there is good lighting, it should be just fine. All in all, I think this is a very nice small size long range standard zoom that offers a great aperture advantage for micro for third system. Has a beautiful modern aesthetic design. The image quality is satisfying overall, especially if you shoot video only. At a price of about 400 euros, I think it's a very worth considering option even over the 17 to 50 mm f2.8 lens. Also, I managed to test this lens with a light adapter on my Sony a6300 and the result 
is very, very nice because the lens is designed for APS-C coverage. There is no vignetting issue whatsoever on the A6300. So you can take full advantage of the 24 megapixel sensor in stills. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like to support the channel. See you next time.